Good morning, pregame crew. It is Friday, December 30th, 2022, our last pregame show of the year. 8.21 a.m. Eastern, 6.21 a.m. Mountain Time. Thank you for being here. You're at the pregame show. This is a show where I look at the indices, commodities, crypto movers, and shakers of the day. My goal is to get you ready for the trading day. I can tell you that today is not the day that you're going to make your year green if you're red or that you're not you're going to hit that seven figures or whatever your goals are don't put a lot of pressure on the day that's a good way to end the year actually on a sour note so definitely wanted to get that out the way early on audio visual check and then i'll do a few chart requests and say hello to my friends good morning andre greg casey tess hey bob seth seth topher sharif ken hey nugget matthew mary Thank you, Night Chuck and Andre. Hey, Katie, Sweaty. Hey, Tess. How are y'all? Happy New Year to all of you. May you have a blessed day, a great, safe weekend, and may 2023 treat you wonderfully. That's my wish for all of you. So, are there any chart requests? Uh, Ape. Ape looks pretty terrible. Don't they have a split or something? Isn't that what they announced over here? <sighs> Had a sneezing fit right before I went live, so excuse the nasally sound. Daily, a higher low is a more likely scenario as we sit here on the daily 50 MA. We filled this $1.38 gap, but we still have a gap down here at 72 cents to be mindful of. Four hour lower high, the more likely scenario. Getting pretty tight on the hourly. Uh, $1.59 is your resistance and then support $1.44 and then $1.35. Yeah, hit that like button, please. Oh, Costa Rica is awesome. That's wonderful. I would love to go there. It's a, my goals for next year, I want to work on my vision board this weekend, is I definitely want to travel a little more and see the world. I've definitely stayed in my comfort zone of Cabo, Hawaii, and just not really explored. So that's my goal for next year. So ape doesn't look great. Bears are looking to top fish. It's given up a lot of that large move. It's retraced approximately 65% of that move, so lower highs expected on the daily. Okay, arbitrage opportunity if the boat goes through. Gotcha. Okay, PHIA on Euro next. Okay. Daily inside bar. Weekly 1429, 14. Weekly lower high is the more likely scenario here as we're coming from a lower low. Daily chart, nice bounce. Four hour looking for a higher low compared to 1375. I would say if you're in long, I'd stay in long. As long as these hourly EMAs are below you, I would stay in long. Resistance double top 1429. <laughs> Hood talking about throwing hands, catching hands, catch these hands. Nvidia. Yeah, Mary, it does have a potential weekly IHS. You are right. And bulls want this right side to be as symmetrical as possible with this side, 140.55. We hit 138.84 this week, so we definitely need to hold that. But that definitely is a very constructive pattern, and it somewhat matches up with the uh, spy that Dan's been pointing out for a long time now, the potential for this two-week inverse head and shoulders on spy here. So that would definitely match up. Happy New Year to you and blessings to you, Tess. Hey, Succulent Life. Hey, OK, P-O-K. -OK. Steven. Yeah, last Friday of the year. We're going to play it smart today. Play it smart. Let's 
See Netflix. Fiona is in a short. I have Netflix as one of the queen of the mountain trades today with this daily 50 MA overhead. I think it's a decent short. I would wait for a pop to short it. Your five minute approaching oversold got a little bullish divergence in RSI. Fiona, if you're listening, I would probably close sooner than later. With the market pulling back the way it is, you're probably safe to hold as well. So I would scale out for sure. So TSLL, I don't look at the derivatives. I look at the underlying Tesla. So Tesla is pulling back a lot more than bulls would like. We broke this hourly EQ. 1843 we have not broken it to the downside 11843 is your key support so bulls could look to buy TSLL off of Tesla's 11843 support level you could look to buy there and stop out if 11843 is lost bonjour roger hi od hey michael I have time for one more chart request before we get started with indices, commodities, crypto movers and shakers of the day. And if you're joining us over on TradingView, thank you for being here. You're at the pregame show and this is where I go over indices, commodities, crypto movers and shakers of the day. Okay, let's see. Do we have anybody? Where I go over indices, commodities, crypto. Definitely don't want to hear myself twice. Okay, don't. there's a few people over there don't see any questions for myself, so I'm going to delete that. I see Jason's monitoring it, so. Hi, Whitney. Litecoin, haven't looked at that in a while. The hourly is definitely getting tight with the squeeze. Four hour, you have multiple inside bars. Resistance, 6689. Support, 6620. Getting tight. Weekly 50 MA overhead, we rejected there a few times. Same thing for the daily. A lower high is expected on the daily compared to 7160. Four hour 50 MA overhead problems. Hourly overhead 50 MA problems. Man, 50 MA is terrorizing these bulls. Look at that. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. Okay, 50 MA is the yellow line, okay? It's overpriced on the weekly, daily. 4 hour, hourly, 30 minute, 15 minute, that's pretty funny. You got some misdirection there on shorter term time frames with this 4 hour inside bars. Hey Ricky, I'll go over MSTR and then I'll get started. MSTR micro strategy, as long as Bitcoin is weak, I would anticipate the MSTR would be weak. Daily's oversold. I would still consider this somewhat news related, so I would disregard RSI, not say it, saying daily's oversold. Oh, I can, it may bounce from here because again, this is news related. 134.09 was your support and you held 133.77. I would say that you have a monthly double bottom right here, right now, but it definitely looks threatened. Bounces are for shorting until it stops working. Hourly EMAs have been overhead since December 15th, and we've dropped approximately 50%. There will be a dead cat bounce. There will be, eventually. But you want to buy on the right side of the V. Oh. Okay, thank you, Jason. I don't, I don't know what I did differently today. thought I did the same, but... You know, life happens. All right. XLF. Let's do Let's look at XLF. If you look at XLF on the daily, we have the 50 MA overhead. We are in a daily uptrend. Was this the higher low, right? Yes, we are in a daily uptrend, but that daily 50 MA overhead has me kind of giving the stank eye to this chart. Yes, I said stank eye. We're getting tiny higher highs without a lot of follow through. Could be a rising wedge on the four hour. Hmm, this just changed my view. I didn't catch this earlier. I was looking at XLF, but I would like a top fish at 34.38 with that rising wedge with that in mind on the higher time frame. All right, let's get started. Thank you, Ricky. No, you're awesome. Good morning.
Welcome to the pregame show. This is who I am. I'm Char Gallory. And what I do here every morning is I go over indices, commodities, crypto movers, and shakers of the day. If you want to give me a follow on Twitter, I would greatly appreciate it at Lori. And if you could hit that like button for any value that you find, if I give you one nugget, hit the like button. I would appreciate it. All right, ES. My tweet this morning is the Bulls better be ready to throw hands right here and protect this four hour higher low against 380450. That's what we're watching for today. So I want you to make note of, sorry, I keep stretching and I just want to make it to where you can see it. We had a lower high, lower low, higher high. Okay, so ES got a higher high on the four hour. Let's look at NASDAQ. Four hour higher high. RTY, four hour higher high. But you know what didn't get one? YM, lower high. So YM has some relative weakness coming in. And I saw that yesterday. I posted in our chat uh, early on the XLI was looking a little bit weak. We had industrials take a breather yesterday because YM carried us to the promised land bullish wise on this bull bounce in a bear market or whatever you feel like labeling it. I don't feel like labeling it anything. Dow definitely showed its hand a little bit, a little bit weaker. But let's just have... A silent moment for semiconductors and Tesla and all the work that they brought to the table yesterday. Tesla was up 8% and y'all look at these semiconductors. I tell y'all at least once a week, semiconductors, they are the fuel to the market's engine. And my notes specifically said yesterday, it is up to semis and Tesla to take us to the promised land in a bullish reversal pattern if we're going to have one. I went against my table yesterday, my table lined up more bearish than bullish, but I told y'all, this crazy woman. Here are the notes from yesterday. Semis and Tesla are pivotal, pivotal to the market bullish reversal. We need both to participate. We need both. And guess who took us there? Yep, semiconductors and Tesla. And Tesla is not a large part of SPY anymore. I want you to look at this. You can go to ETF.com and you can put in any ETF that you want to see what the top holdings are. This is SPY. I want you to look. Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Berkshire, uh, Alphabet, United Healthcare, Google again, Google and Google L, Johnson & Johnson, Exxon, JPM. Okay, so if JPM is 10, count with me. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Tesla is the 17th largest holding in SPY. It is no longer part of the top 10 of SPY. QQQ, it is number seven in QQQ. It's definitely dropped on the list. And this is why I have the main reason I have this pulled up is I wanted to show y'all we had a flippening. We had a flippening last month. It's a word. I, I know it is. Microsoft is now the largest holding in QQQ, larger than Apple. Do you hear me? Microsoft is larger in QQQ than Apple. And look at SPY. Look how important Apple is to SPY. 6%. We have 10 companies that make up 25% of the market. You better tell me that you shouldn't have a good, your good eye on Apple at all times. That's what my grandma used to say. I got my good eye on you. I hope, would hope she had two good eyes. But anyway... Apple is super important to the market. Tesla and semis were super important yesterday. They got their reversal on and they did. If you took advantage of that, let me know if I helped you in any way yesterday. Here's our weighted table. This is just a concept I came up with. I'm I'm kind of I'm calling it market environment dossier right now. We'll see if that we're just try, we're doing it on a trial run. We'll see how it kind of works itself out. But this is what I'm seeing today. I'm seeing more bullish than bearish signs. And if I look up at the market, that's not what I see. We're almost, we're down 26 handles on ES. It's like, what the heck, Lori, are you smoking doing this table in the morning? Happily nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, so back to ES. Oh, T Mars, no, you're the greatest. So four hour higher low is anticipated on ES. Four hour higher low is anticipated on NASDAQ. Four hour higher low expected on RTY and on YM. So bears are looking, aggressive bears are looking to top fish yesterday. 
Conservative bulls are waiting for a pullback buy for a potential four hour higher low. Let's look at the dollar. Is it the dollar? One second, I know it's bonds. What else? One second. I gotta go look at my notes. Weekly inside bar bear break. Okay, it was the US 10 year. That's what I was thinking of. The US 10 year has a potential four hour head and shoulders. Do y'all see this? Sorry, it's a squatty one. Looks like the squatty potty. Four hour head and shoulders on US 10 year. And then with bonds, we have a four hour potential inverse head and shoulders and bulls need to play defense right here, right now. If this pattern can hold, this is bullish for the market. Bonds, we have a bullish pattern, reversal pattern forming. Forming. It is not confirmed. We have US 10 year, a bearish reversal pattern forming. Not confirmed. That's still bullish the market. If it were to, US 10 year were to break bear and bonds were to break bull, <clears throat> that would be bullish for the market. We broke this weekly inside bar bearish you see this yellow candle we broke that bearish we're still holding 103.448 we hit 103.565 this morning and we're bouncing market bulls want to see dollar chill the frick out and pull back so let's go look at here so dollar that bear break on the weekly inside bar is bullish the market we have U.S. 10-year potential four-hour head and shoulders. That is bullish for the market. And we have bonds and a potential four-hour inverse head and shoulders. That is bullish the market. So here's my carry forward information that I think is the, some of the most important information today. And yes, this changes on the day. Um, absolutely changes every day. And I know you're saying, well, how can I keep up if you just keep changing the rules? It's not that I'm changing the rules. I'm just looking for the most obvious patterns to give me the most obvious clues. All right. So that's my carry forward information. It's what I'm watching today. And then let's go look at the VIX. I have been telling y'all for weeks that I had disregarded VIX because of its disconnect. That's not what I wanted here because of its disconnect we have this nice tight four hour eq and this is expected this is what you would think would happen when you why did i just get rid of that come on last show of the year lori get it together okay so i i give up I just give up. How am I supposed to end it if I don't hit escape? So we have this nice tightening pattern that's expected with that weekly inside bar on ES. Now let's go look at that. The high of last week, 391975, the low, 378850. We are stuck inside that range. Doesn't that make sense when you go look at all this misdirection on the four hour? Look at this Michigas. Look at this. We expect a lot of misdirection when we have inside bars on higher time frames as the heat seeking missiles, i.e. bulls and bears, are searching for liquidity and probing to the upside into the downside, trying to search for that liquidity. So I'm not expecting a low volume day. I know this is the day before a weekend holiday. We're going to be off on Monday. I am still expecting some pretty decent volume and positioning for next year today, and I think we, it could get whippy. So I don't want you to expect some type of sleepy day and it take you by surprise. Don't get taken by surprise. Stay agile. All right. I think I did all the big, big important things. Now let's go look. Hang Seng was slightly green. DAX is down 1%. That's not very bullish the market for the DAX to be down. And Bitcoin is leading us to the downside. We have a four hour downtrend. Bitcoin continues its relative weakness compared to the market. Ethereum is attempting a four hour higher low here, holding up a little bit better than Bitcoin. Gold, just one second. All right, so gold. On the hourly, we're getting a lot of misdirection. Let's see where we have our inside bar. We're inside on the four hour. And the weekly, we broke bull, but man, that's still, I'm calling this a double top. 
And this is still a potential daily rising wedge, higher highs without a lot of follow through. That's indicative of rising wedges on a higher time frame. I still don't like gold. And it is fighting to close above that weekly MA, 50 MA, which has been my angst and bent against gold for five weeks now, for a month, the whole month of December. I've been bearish gold up here at this weekly 50 MA. It is attempting a close above the weekly 50 MA. That would be notable for me if the gold bulls could pull that off. Again, daily rising wedge, the more likely scenario. That's a diamond bearish reversal pattern on gold. I missed that earlier. I think a top fish of gold here is prudent. So let me see. Let me pull up my trade of eight. I may take this trade here. MGC. Let's see. I want to do. I like micro so I can get a few contracts and scale out. Come on. It's not working. Okay, I'm in five micro gold shorts against 1830, and I'm going to put my stop a couple dollars above that because I know how gold likes to play dirty, all right? So if we can change, so I got a gold short here. Sorry if I'm seeing scattered brain. I When I take tra trades, I have to watch my stops because this is real money for me. This isn't fake money. All right. NASDAQ is attempting a bounce. And here's where we look for that first subtle clue that that four hour higher low could be set. If we can get over 1092175, I would uh, condone. I would, I would understand why you took a long and put your stop right below 10900. So that's another trade I'll be looking at over here. If we can get through 192175. I like a long on NASDAQ with your stop below 10,900. Recognizing you're going counter trend, you got a higher probability of getting stopped out. Okay. Back to your regularly scheduled program. So I have a stop buy above 192175, and I have my stop on my gold short above 1830. I'm feeling frisky this morning. I only had one cup of coffee. All right, let's see, we're about, I'm about to get triggered into this trade. All right, oil. We have Baker Hughes rig count today. He uses the word fear low, Dan does. And he, he when he says fear low, he's just saying, let me go to ES and I'll show you. Sorry, I'm answering a question in chat. 3502 is what he's talking about as the fear low. And basically, it's the low of the year. That's the low of the year. That's what he's referring to. All right. Oil. Get, get it together. Oil has this potential four-hour inverse head and shoulders forming. I posted this in the commodities chat room. I think it looked better on the two-hour. Mm, not really. This is possible here. You would ideally want to find it at the bottom of a downtrend. And we're definitely tr trending down here, but it's not very obvious. I'm going to take that off. I don't want to confuse anyone. Weekly lower high is the more likely scenario. Aggressive bulls are looking for that daily higher low. I don't like oil here. I don't like it. I guess a bottom fish of 76.79 or a top fish of 79.70 are the most logical trade areas of location, but not here. Nat gas, I don't like it either. Nat gas is attempting a two hour falling wedge. And what you would want to see is a tiny lower low without a lot of follow through. You have resistance at 4615 and then 4782 support, 44425. I don't like. Nat gas. I haven't liked it for a while. Bears have been in complete control. Oh, ETH. Okay, I see it. Jason, all right. I did Ethereum earlier. Whomever is asking on TradingView, I did it earlier. It's definitely stronger than Bitcoin. 
Best case scenario for ETH bulls would be some type of Adam and Eve pattern. Here's your male part and here's your female part. You have four hour inside bars and it's holding up relatively stronger than Bitcoin. So rewind if you want a little more color on that, but I think that's the summary of it. All right, Nat Gas. Again, I don't have a trade idea for you down here. We had inventory yesterday. Bulls would love to see a four hour higher low compared to 4422, but if we barely break it with just a little follow through, you could be looking for a falling wedge, but I, again, don't wanna trade it. Apple has a potential four hour inverse head and shoulders. I think this looks better on a two hour. There's my two hour chart I was thinking of. Potential two hour inverse head and shoulders on Apple. If this could materialize, that would be good for the market. Bulls were losing the hourly 50 MA. Now let's go look at the hourly 50 MA on Apple, we're close to losing it. Amazon, we're holding it. Nvidia, we're holding it. Tesla, we're not even near it. So Tesla still has relative strength this morning along with semis and Amazon. Apple is slightly weaker. However, we do have this inverse head and shoulders pattern forming just to be aware of. Amazon, we need Amazon to do some heavy lifting today, hold that hourly 50 MA and then resume higher all about the highs of yesterday all about the highs of yesterday and semiconductors for me um jungle cat nq's next resistant is 1198175 that's nq futures so ndx may be a little bit different all right so we did amazon nvidia is a little stronger you want to see them hold the low of yesterday. They're, they're closer to the low of yesterday than they are to the high of yesterday. So we could hold the low, bounce, get a lower high and tighten up. And that's what I would anticipate the most likely scenario today because of the size of these pullbacks. So let me, this is a great chart to explain what I'm looking for today. Big bounce yesterday. Hold the low of yesterday and then go test the high, fail, and tighten up into the last half of the day where we get the real direction. That's that's the vibe I'm feeling today with all of the charts, the flow, the tempo, that's what I'm sensing. We shall see. Tesla, I'm doing it right now. Support 118.43. This morning we got a double bottom, 118.51. It's all about 118.43. And then the low of yesterday, get a tattoo, 11750. This short squeeze could continue, but Tesla bulls have to prove it by holding preferably 118.43, but at an absolute bare minimum, they gotta hold 117.50 or it's game on again for the bears. Meta? Meta is definitely more bullish than other charts. I like Meta for a, let me go to my notes. I like Meta for a back burner trade. So first five, 15 minute oversold, we probably got that yeah, we're getting that in extended hours. I want that during regular trading hours. I want 15 minute oversold in regular trading hours for a meta bottom fish. The other, let me skip to SMH SOXL. I like this for a back burner. Look at the size of yesterday's move. And our five minute RSI, it hit 18 earlier. I want I want it to be oversold during regular trading hours and I, we've got to hold the low of yesterday, 19974, or this idea is kaput. Then your next support is the low of the prior day. I like SMH for potential bottom fish at open. And then the other back burner trade idea is look at XBI. XBI had a stellar day yesterday. It's not giving up a lot in pre-market. I like the first five or 15 minute oversold during regular trading hours. So let's recap those back burners. Meta, SMH and XBI. Okay, now here are my two bearish ideas for Queen of the Mountain. And you're, you're going to see why. Actually, I'm going to add XLF to that. XLF now. Okay, so let me organize this. Okay, so let me do those red so I can stay organized. And meta, I like for back burner. Back burner, back burner. Does that make sense? So here's my queen of the mountain. Netflix now and XLF, they all three have the same setup for me. Daily 50 MA overhead. Look at it. Look at it. It's horrible. 
those raccoons in the progressive commercial. You've got to try this. It tastes disgusting. Look at it. It's horrible. Okay, so I like Netflix top fish against the high of yesterday with this daily 50 MA overhead at 29163. Now, now look at it. <laughs> we have the daily 50 MA overhead. I like a short, a top fish for daily lower high on now. XLF. Someone asked me about it earlier, made me go look at it. This is a little bit different setup because we do have a nice uh, daily uptrend, but we still have these key MAs converging overhead. I like an XLF short. So Netflix now and XLF, I like short because the daily 50 MA are overhead. Meta, SMH, XBI had outsized move yesterday, outsized moves, and I'm looking for the back burner for those. Hey, Megastroke, welcome. Queen of the mountain is just a term that I use for setups that I like more than others. So I've probably looked at over 150 charts this morning. And I'm saying of those charts that I looked at, these setups appeal to me and I have higher conviction. So you see I have SMH here and XBI here and Tesla here. These are the three that I'm watching the most today. SMH for a long, Tesla for a long, XBI for a long, and I may add now, uh, now or Netflix will be one of the two for a short. It's setups that I have a high conviction on, higher conviction, doesn't mean they're, they will necessarily work. All right, let me go back up and see if I missed anything. AVGO. I had this the other day, potential head and shoulders look to it. Man, it's given up so much. You, you are definitely a more comfortable bear top fishing a bounce versus buying this pullback on AVGO. Resistance 56260 and support 55050 and you're down here about to breach it in pre-market. A back burner, if you Google back burner stuff, stuff, by the chart guys, we have a video where Dan goes over what a back burner is. If you look at XBI, do you see how it had this outsized move 4% yesterday? And what I'm saying is the first five or 15 minute oversold can provide great location and opportunity for a long on a back burner. Looking for five minute oversold and the opposite is true, reverse back burner is when you're looking for 15 minute overbought on a name that may be in a downtrend, you're using RSI to help guide you to location. So maybe that'll help. Yeah, BA has been definitely acting weird. I didn't like it. I looked at it this morning. I mean, it's holding the daily eight EMA, so it's hard for me to knock it, but that is the least desirable appealing price action. I've seen it's squished right here at the hourly 50 and 200 MA. I don't like it. I definitely don't like BA. And if you've been around for a while, you know that I was calling out back here last week that I really like this Caterpillar chart. We have this squeeze. We're holding the 50 RSI. We have this trampoline type move setting up. Now it doesn't mean that it will work. It could fail and I'm very cognizant that they, we have some gaps below, but I'd still like that chart. And if you are a TCG member, let me remind you. We have a stock picking contest. It's the Stock World Cup of 2023, and we're giving away first prize, an annual subscription to TCG, second prize, course of your choice, third prize, monthly membership. And this is available only to TCG members. So if you want to join the chart, guys, if you've been thinking about it, now's the time and participate in our stock picking contest. So you get to pick one stock, not an ETF, not crypto, not option, one stock, long or short. And then you get to pick a second tiebreaker one. And that is going to be fun. So you have until midnight tomorrow. Yeah, hit that like button, folks. Karsten, it is my honor and my pleasure to get to do this work for you. Selfishly, it helps me. It helps my trading. Uh, <laughs> homebody, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Love the chart. Hoodoo. I enjoy what I do and doing this show for you helps my trading. Uh, it's been one of the best things I've done for my trading is start this pregame show. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of commitment. My husband and my family have to commit a lot for this. I have to go to bed early so I can get up early. So I lose a lot of evening time with family for this. It's absolutely worth it though. All right. 
Thank you for being here. Do not try to make your year in one day. Do not try to salvage your year in one day. I'm looking at you. If that's what you woke up thinking, I see you. Don't you do it. Stay disciplined. Stay within your rules. And today could be whippy. Expect anything. And I thank you for being here. All right. You stop losses.